Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Castello, Board Certified Family Practice, and today I want to talk to you about diabetes, uh, particularly type 2 diabetes, also known as non-insulin dependent diabetes, also known as adult onset diabetes, also known as insulin resistance, and they're all very similar terms. They all generically mean the same thing, but there are some subtle differences. Uh, first off, let's talk about insulin, and everybody's heard that term, but doesn't necessarily know what that means. When you eat a meal, your food is turned into blood sugar in your bloodstream, and it's not needed in your bloodstream, you need it in your muscles and in your tissues for energy. The job of insulin is to pick up the sugar molecule and put it into your muscles. So for a particular size meal, for a particular amount of food that you eat, you make a particular amount of insulin to match the amount of food and to put that sugar into your muscles and brain and tissues for energy. When you're a type 2 diabetic, you are what's called insulin resistant. So if you think of eating food and having sugar in your bloodstream, you have a sugar molecule and you make an insulin and the insulin picks up the sugar and it puts it into the muscles to be used as energy. When you have insulin resistance, you eat a sugar, your body makes an insulin and goes to put it into the muscles and the muscles say, I'm not interested, I'm resistant to you insulin. So your body gets offended and it doesn't want to have high blood sugar, so your pancreas makes a second insulin now to do the job of what one insulin used to do. So you have a sugar in your bloodstream, you make two insulins and for a while that works, it pushes the sugar into the muscle tissue and as you go along and progress, you become more insulin resistant and that does doesn't work and now you make four insulins and then eight insulins and more and more insulin to do the same job of what one insulin used to do. The problem with that is that eventually you become so insulin resistant that you can't make enough insulin to keep up with the job and only then do you actually see your blood sugars rising. So you can be insulin resistant or pre-diabetic for five or even 10 years. And if your doctor's measuring just blood sugar, you don't necessarily know what's happening. And only when you are officially broken, when your blood sugar goes up, are you actually diagnosed as a diabetic. But that's been a process that's been going on for several years in the past. One of the things your doctor can do if he's suspicious that you are pre-diabetic is to draw a fasting insulin or something called a C-peptide level. And if that is elevated, that means your body's working harder than it should to keep your blood sugars normal. An issue is that insulin makes you hungry and insulin makes you store fat. So the more insulin you have in your bloodstream at any given time, the more you want to eat and the fatter you get. And guess what happens when you eat more food? You make more insulin, you make more insulin, you get hungry, and you eat more, and it's a very vicious cycle. An ironic thing that happens is when you drink alcohol, um, alcohol makes you have an inappropriate insulin release. So after a night of drinking, you've had 2,000 calories of alcohol, you really shouldn't be hungry, but you're starving to death because you have a high insulin level. And what do you do at two o'clock in the morning? You go to White Castle, what I call the White Castle phenomenon. When you're a type two diabetic, you are literally walking around every day like it's two o'clock in the morning, you're starving and you're looking for White Castle to eat something. So it's not obviously a very efficient way to try and lose weight. One of the things we can do even before you're diabetic is to put you on a few diabetic medications and they actually reverse that process. They help you become less insulin resistant. They help lower your insulin levels and keep your blood sugar good. And then you tend to have low insulin. You tend to be less hungry. When you're less hungry, you eat less. When you eat less, you have less sugar in your bloodstream. When you have less sugar in your bloodstream, you release less insulin. And now the process reverses and you can actually help lose weight. So if you go to your doctor and he wants to talk about putting you on on diabetic medications and you're resistant, I would encourage you to have a conversation with them because not only can it help treat your diabetes, it can help prevent diabetes. I'm Dr. Greg Castello. Thanks for tuning in.